Ooh, bare streets right there. But down in New Orleans, Mardi Gras arrives just three days from now. While Fat Tuesday seems to get all the attention, it's actually just the final celebration following weeks and weeks of parades and other events. The pandemic's put much of that on hold, but the ever creative residents of the city have found a whole new canvas for their artistic expression. Our Jamie Wax has their story. For the people of New Orleans, Mardi Gras is more than just the world's biggest free party. It's the throbbing, pulsing, beating heart of the city's culture. But how do you keep Mardi Gras alive when a pandemic has stopped the parades from rolling? You turn it into Yardy Gras. All across the city and beyond, house floats have been popping up. The universe put me in the right place at the right time, and everybody just latched onto the idea, and here we are, you know, 3,000 house floats later. Back in late November, New Orleans resident Megan Boudreaux tweeted, It's decided. We're doing this. Turn your house into a float and throw all the beads from your attic at your neighbors walking by. That bit of levity and that simple idea spiraled into a grassroots movement that transformed New Orleans homes into the famed floats that typically parade through the city. I got on Facebook and made a group to, you know, try and recruit some people, and that group just exponentially grew within days into something that was clearly going to need to be organized and not just the low-key neighborhood thing that I had intended. <laughs> she now has a team of over 50 volunteers and has inspired multiple other crews and individuals to join her in creating something to celebrate. It's just been such a long year and everything seems to be bad news and just from day one everyone I talked to said this is so great I have something fun to do something positive to think about and I think that's really why everybody just clung to it so quickly because I don't know that it would have happened in any other year. It's a real triumph, triumph of art, triumph of, you know, spirit. It's wonderful. Doug McCash has been covering New Orleans culture for local publications for decades and has been photographing some of the most creative floats as they appear throughout the city. As you have documented all of these places, you've encountered a lot of locals, a lot of tourists passing by, families. What are you hearing from the people around these house floats? I think people are really celebrating that we're supposed to have this reputation for being creative and never say die, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And this is such a great example of it. And I think everybody is really enjoying that. Even in COVID, we're living up to expectations. Look, Axie! A sentiment echoed by Joni Broussard. We caught up with the Louisiana native as she was out with her family. What does it mean? when the parades are not rolling, for you to be able to see these houses like this? Well, this is actually incredible. You get to walk and actually see and take your time as when floats pass, you know, it's kind of, you gotta watch it or you miss it. So this is, this is pretty neat. So for you, this is not like the second choice. This is even better. I think so. I mean, COVID has done a lot of bad, you know, for a lot of people, but I don't think people would have thought of this if COVID wouldn't have happened. City Council Member Jay Banks is chairman of the board of the Zulu Social Aid and Pleasure Club, an iconic part of Mardi Gras parading. It is New Orleans culture. We are the melting pot of the world. The cultures here are all blended from French to Spanish to African. They all came here together and made this magic that we see today. And we have this wonderful gift to share. This is absolutely magical. And this is not the first time that magic and this city's resilience have been tested. The first casualty of Katrina was normal. We knew when the storm hit, normal died first. So we needed to come back and we led the way back home with that first Mardi Gras after Katrina. That was a much smaller parade. There were far fewer people, but it sent a message that, hey, New Orleans is still here. Something the people of New Orleans prove time and time again. This is not um, what we had hoped for or planned, but the reality of it is, again, it can cancel the way we practice our customs, but it can't cancel our customs. It'll just be different than what it's been in the past. So no, Mardi Gras is not dead, it's just different. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Jamie Wax, New Orleans.
And, and this is the only second time that, that Mardi Gras parades have been canceled. The first was due to a police strike and full disclosure by my father-in-law. <laughs> so, okay. uh, but what's interesting about this is that New Orleans always, as they said, always comes back because they have so much to show and so much to shine through. Resilient. Resilient.